We got the chance to speak to some of the folks who made the brand new Marvel series Echo. Here's our conversation with director Sidney Freeland. Uh, hey, Sidney. So there is this there is this look and feel to Echo that mirrors some of the early work that Marvel did with Netflix. And I was curious as to whether those shows were a part of your mood board when you were crafting this. The look and the tone that feel actually stemmed from the story that we were trying to tell, right? So we always knew that the the Maya Lopez story was going to be a little bit more grounded, a little bit more street level, um, a little grittier in its nature, right? Um, we, were, we were trying to tell a story that was a little more human in, it, in its scope and scale, but that was actually incredibly freeing, you know, for us because because we weren't it wasn't the fate of the universe at stake for us. It wasn't like, you know, it's not these huge like cosmic consequences. We get to tell something that is uh, hopefully deeply a little more intimate and human in, in its scope and scale. But then, but in addition to that, you have Maya Lopez, who is a criminal, who is a villain in Hawkeye. And um, in order to tell that story properly, that meant that uh, the people in our series, they bleed, they die, they get killed, you know, bones get broken you know spoilers for echo um yeah <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah that was all all of that all of that kind of stemmed directly from the story itself the that sequence the fight in episode one is one of the best things i've seen in a very long time it is very very cool nice. um, Thank you. the the liberal use of silence that you have in the show is both i think respectful beautiful and not showy um, can you talk to me about how you structured that into your storytelling? Because it does so much, right? It shifts POV. It it does a lot of work, which is very very cool. Yeah, no, I, I think I think it it really it really came from uh, having conversations with with our our deaf consultants, our deaf actors. Um, you know, even like somebody like Alakwa. Uh, you know, I remember her sharing sharing with me that like she used to go grow up going to powwows. Uh, Native, it's like a Native American social gathering. Uh, she, you know, her being born deaf, um, she it was one of the few things that she could share with her family because she could feel the vibrations from the drums. You know, and I always remember being very, very kind of touched by that because that was an experience that I had growing up, and it was just one of this one of these things that I think. Um, uh, I felt very, very connected to her in that moment. And so I think in these conversations, you know, uh, and in trying to craft the the visual style and the visual language of the series, you know, we we try to put ourselves in the perspective of Maya Lopez whenever we could, you know. Um, and, and again, like, I think one of the things that I love about in the first episode, there's a um, there's a big fight sequence that's a one -er, um that um, on the page I, I particularly love because... Maya Lopez came into that scene as a teenage girl, but then she yeah. leaves the cold blooded killer. And um, and so for myself, it was important that I, I wanted to be able to see that transformation happen in real time. Um, and that meant that meant we had to shoot it as a wonder. Um and but we knew it was ambitious, but we we knew it was ambitious, but we knew we wanted to take a big swing. Very cool. I, I've got about 45 seconds left, but very quickly, um, what I what frustrates me the most about stories like this sometimes is when people take bad characters or villainous characters and then try to make them superheroes. I'm glad that you're sticking to what they did in Daredevil, where you feel sympathy for the Kingpin, but he's still a bad guy. Can you talk to me very quickly about striking that beautiful balance? Yeah, no, I think, I think what's the expression, any good villain thinks they're doing the right thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so for us, it was important to not shy away from the background of the character. Like the goal was never to turn her into Captain America. The goal was to embrace where she was coming from and just see where that led us. You know, that was really kind of the goal. I love it. We've seen the first three episodes and uh, I can't wait to see the last three. But before I let you go, I was that kid. Hey! I was that kid. Hey! I was the brown kid trying to build a hoverboard, driving my parents crazy. So I love your short. Thank you very funny, much. Funny story. Funny story. Wait, real quick. So I made a short film called Hoverboard and I built yep. a hoverboard from scratch. I went onto a production design website, got the specifications, built it out of foam core and party plates and uh, Velcro and uh, did it, used it to raise funds for a short film uh, that I did. Oh, fantastic. But I love your short film. It's sweet and heartfelt and absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you so much, Sydney.
All the episodes of Marvel's Echo are now streaming on Disney Plus Hotstar. Check it out. Let us know what you think. Sound off in the comments. Thanks so much for watching.